Still talking about coronavirus, this is the novel type. And so this is one where doctors and scientists are still learning about the virus as we move. And as a result, you may have some lingering questions that have been left unanswered. Now imagine having children at home who keep asking you these questions that you have no answers to. Scientists, again, are still learning about it and researching on it. But at least for these scientists, they may have some answers to those questions that your children may be asking. And so at this point, we're asking that you allow your kids to call in because it's time for a health segment and they get to interact with our doctor, who, by the way, is DA. SP Dr. Faisal Ayembila. Now, he's been here a couple of times, also answered the questions a few times, and he's back on air with us. And so our numbers are on your screens right now. Get your kids calling. At least we'll give them some few minutes to also get answers to all those questions. Good morning, Doc. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, everything good morning, okay? Bella. Yeah, I I'm fine. Okay, now how's everything going? I know you're in the UK, and so uh, you're still under <laughs> lockdown, even though you get to work. But how exactly. are things looking like? Well, to be honest, um, um, you know, the anxiety is still there. The efforts are still frantic. But we believe that we may have reached a point where our number of mortality, I mean, with regards to mortality, our number of deaths may have reduced. Mm. And so there's a little bit of um, a silver lining to all this. What are some of the questions that children usually ask about coronavirus? <laughs> Well, Bella, you know, the biggest question children would want to ask um, at any point, um, regardless of geographical location, would always be what a virus is mm -hmm. and how do you get this virus and what's the difference between coronavirus and, what's, and um, COVID-19. Yeah. You know, it, it's a mixed bag of questions. Um, I can imagine. Of well, speaking of which, we have a, a Zubaydah on the line with us. Hello. Good morning. Hi. Hi. Good how morning. are you, Zubaydah? Uh, Okay. Well, parents, again, you still have to monitor your children whilst they make these phone calls so that we don't have too many of them getting on and off the line at the same time. And so, Zubeda, are you still there? Okay, I think we lost her. So, let your children call as well. But we're just talking to Dr. Ayem Bila to uh, tell us some of the questions that children have been asking. So, what? They usually ask what a virus is. Yes, well, they would ask, for example, what a virus is. Okay, so in very plain English, for children who are watching... <laughs> I'm sure they also have those same questions. So let's start off with that whilst we wait for some more phone calls. What is okay. a virus and how different is that from everything else? Okay, so well, first of all, uh, let's say, let's contrast, compare and contrast viruses and bacteria, for example. A virus is a, I mean, both would cause um, illnesses, bacteria cause illnesses, virus cause illnesses as well. But viruses are generally more difficult to deal with because these are very, very small particles mm. that really just have a protein covering and they have genetic material. What a virus does okay. is it enters your body and it takes control of your cells, um, the mechanism for which your cells would replicate themselves, um, the mechanism for which um, cells would create more copies. And so it hijacks your system and then mm. it begins to create more copies of itself. Okay, so hold on. We have a call on the line. So let's speak to him or her. Hello? Hello. Hi, good morning. What's your name? My name is Cleopatra. Cleopatra, what's your question for doctor? Um, I want to ask, um, apart from, with the new type of um, nose marks that have been approved by the FDA, mm -hmm. some of us don't have access to those new type of face marks. And also, um, we do not know where these approved face marks are being bought. So how can we be able to access it, especially those in the north? Okay, for those in the north, how can you access these face masks? Yeah, that's a very big question, isn't it? Yes. Um, first of all, you know, the rationale between, um, um, when you have to put on a face mask is mainly because you first of all want to prevent others from getting the infection that you may have, mm -hmm. or you want to prevent a situation whereby you get the infection. In this case, when we tell everyone to wear the face mask, it's essentially because we are trying to prevent people from spreading, you know, the pathogen in the public space. Mm. And so the FDA rightly has come out with regulations um, with regards to what would make a face mask efficient or not. So right now, we would just say that um, we would have to look forward to the regulations that are being panned out. I understand that tailors and seamstresses would have to get some form of licenses to produce FDA-approved face masks. Mm. And so at this point, we could 
I mean, in the absence of anything else, you could even just use some cloth, cover your mouth, and that would be okay. Okay. Because the rationale okay. is for you to prevent, it's for us to prevent um, a situation whereby people are coughing in the environment and, um, you know, that's progressing the disease within the environmental or community, community space. Okay. All right. I have someone else on the line. And please, I hope it's your children that are calling. We need to answer their questions as well. Hello? Hello? Coronavirus. What is coronavirus? <laughs> is that what you just asked? Yes. What's your name, by the way? Elikem. 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 Okay. Doc, what is coronavirus? Oh. This child wants to this know. Is another, this is another very popular question. People would ask you what is the coronavirus and what is COVID-19. So the coronaviridae or the coronavirus... It's actually a family of viruses. Um, okay. Imagine my family. Doc, you have to break it down for, the, for we, the kids, to understand. Because you use some <laughs> words that are too technical yes. for us. So break exactly. it down for us. It's, so it's a family of viruses. It's a group of viruses um, that has many members, um, like the SARS virus and the MERS virus, Middle Eastern Respiratory um, Virus. But then this particular virus is a new oh. one that has never been seen before and was only seen for the first time in the year 2019 in December. Okay. All right. So it's the novel coronavirus. Okay. And it's causing a disease called COVID-19. I see. Uh, another call on the line. Hello? 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 Hi. Good morning. Morning. What's your name? My name is Abel. Eben. Abel. Abel. Abel, what's your question for doctor? I want to know the difference between COVID-19 and coronavirus. Okay. Difference, Doc, yes. you predicted. <laughs> <laughs> I predicted this question yes. because it's a very popular one. So the coronavirus is the causative organism. Okay. Um, the coronavirus is, is, the, is the virus. Doc, you have to break and it down. the disease down. that is caused What is causative organism for, for a child? <laughs> <laughs> so coronavirus causes COVID-19. COVID-19 is the disease ah. and coronavirus is the cause. So it's the virus. That's what you call it's the, the virus. virus. Okay, the virus it's called coronavirus. Exactly. Okay. Yes. I see. Anyway, uh, let's see if you can also call and answer some of these questions. So earlier you were explaining what a virus is and how it works. I want us to go back yes. to that whilst we wait for another call. Yes. And so Bella, the difficulty with viruses is viruses are very tricky. Um, they have the ability to mutate. And by mutation, well, um, they mm -hmm. have the ability to change themselves in uh -huh. the human body. And so that makes treatment very difficult. If you look at all the diseases we have, even let's say in a national, on a national scale, you would realize that the viral diseases tend to be more difficult to treat. For example, HIV, hepatitis, as compared to let's say cholera and other bacterial diseases. So viruses are very tricky because they keep mutating and changing themselves at each, at each um, iteration. Another question that a child has asked as well is that, is it not the same as having a cold? So if my nose is running, is that coronavirus? No, not at all. Okay. You see, uh, for the benefit of our kids. <laughs> before before you even answer that, I'll let you hold on. We have another call on the line. Hello? Hello? Hi, good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Hello? Okay, I think we lost that person. Go on, Doc. It's true. Yeah, so where was I? Was talking, we were talking about viruses. Worrying and to cold and having a runny nose, oh. yes. Okay, that's a good reminder. And so, yes, when you have a runny nose, there could be about 15 different causes, mm. you know, because it's a specific set of symptoms, constellation of symptoms that could have different causative um, or etiological factors. And so you can have a cold that's a result of a virus. You could have a cold that's a re that could actually be bacterial, or, contam or that is worsened by the presence of bacteria. And so it's not every cold that is um, as a result of coronavirus. And indeed, the coronavirus is a more severe form of um, a respiratory disease than your regular cold. Okay. Fidel Okujeto from Akosombo. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I wanted to ask, if there are no critical conditions, why are we still seeing people dying? If there are no critical conditions, why are we seeing yes. people dying? Yes. Okay. 
Well, let, let doctor speak okay. and then I'll just uh, I'll let you on the number of critical conditions we have in the country. Yes. I think that's Fidel, right? Very yes. smart question. Yes, yes. For every five people who get the coronavirus, one would end up in the hospital. You understand? Okay. And usually we would keep saying that the severity of the infection you have typically depends on your age and how active your immune system is. And so this disease is worse in, let's say, our fathers and our mothers who are already saddled with different healthcare issues, mm. and by virtue of which um, they may not have the strongest of immune system at that time. Simply put, it's worse as you age. Mm. And so someone 78 years old would, may have a more severe form of the infection than someone who is 22 years old. Okay, and just a quick update. So yesterday, based on the numbers that were given, we're at 1,671. It was mentioned that six of them are moderately or critically ill. And so we do have some people um, under that condition as well. And so if you also want to call, let us know. The numbers are on your screen. So, Doc, we're going back to that question about the cold, um, you know. Yes. And, 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 of course, I didn't give you the chance to speak on it, so please go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so that also brings us to another important um, determinant of disease, which is the mode of transmission. Mm -hmm. When you have a common cold, influenza, for example, that is, a strictly, that is strictly an airborne infection. Coronavirus, this is the tricky part, coronavirus is transmitted by respiratory droplets and not necessarily a pure airborne disease as other colds are. With coronavirus, you must get into contact with the virus, maybe by shaking someone's hand or touching a surface that's contaminated. And then through that process, you would eat the virus via your eyes, your nose, or your mouth. Okay. All right. Another exactly. caller on the line. Hello. Uh, yeah. Hi. Good morning. Tell us your name. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Marcus. You are Marcus? Yes, please. Okay. Marcus, how old are you? I'm 16 years. 16. Okay, what's your question? I'm 16 years old. What's your question? Please, I want to know when we are going back to school and not. You want to know what? I want to know when we are going back to school. When you are going back to school. Doc, can children go back to school anytime soon? Um, to be honest, I don't foresee that happening. In fact, in the United Kingdom, we everything is pretty much on hold until, let's say, the first week of June. And even with that, that's the earliest um, point that is being looked at at the moment. And so he may, he might as well stay at home until about July or August. But at this point, the simple answer is nobody is entirely sure. Until about July or August? Possibly, because we, we have to allow the virus to run its course within the society to get to the point of, um, you know, the highest cases plateau and then come downwards again. Okay. And that depends on a lot of evidence, which could take a lot of time. But why is it so difficult for children to go to school then? Because we have adults going back to work. Yes. It's just because of the sort of environment you have when you create, and, and that is created when children go to school. You know, at work, being adults, you and I could easily adhere to still social distancing protocols and all of that. But then when you send children to school, they wouldn't be at that time the most cooperative with regards to not touching their faces and, have, and adhering to social distance and all. Okay. And so that may just cause the infection to spread once again. All right. So we have someone else on the line. Hello. Hello. Hi. My name is um, Aila, um, but I am six years old. Okay. Hi. Hi. What's your question? My question is that... Um, when somebody is infected and he has gone to the hospital, can the COVID-19 infect all the people? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Doc. Yes. I understand the point. Um, you know, it's, it's good. It's very good to have children ask questions because they seem to ask um, questions that are even more difficult than adults would. Yeah. Um, she's asking I think primarily she wants to know that if you have the virus and you go to the hospital, would you infect everyone else? Yes. Um, there is that possibility. And so that's why in every hospital you go to, we have special places where we keep patients who, are, who test positive for COVID-19. Mm. 
and those are the isolation wards or the COVID-19 base, so that people who do not have the virus would not end up getting it if they were to be admitted in the hospital. Okay. Uh, yeah. Break it down a little more for us. So she probably might ask, <laughs> so then what is an isolation ward? What would you find there? When you go to an isolation ward, it's pretty much, let's say, okay, let's use police hospital for an example. We don't yet have COVID-19 um, patients, cases in police hospital, but let's imagine we had four cases. These four patients would be kept in a separate room from everyone else who is on admission in the hospital just to ensure that the four patients who have who are tested positive do not end up spreading the infection to all the patients who are at the hospital for admission or for medical treatment at that time. Okay, interesting. And we're still waiting for more of your calls. Allow your children to call in and let them ask the questions. I have Caleb from Tema. Hello. Hello, Caleb. Yes. Good morning. How old are you? I'm nine. You are nine. So what is your question, Caleb? My question is, when you use your best elbow, when you use your best elbow to cover your mouth, your mouth and your nose, and you sneeze, uh -huh. and, you, and you sneeze or cough, can it, can it not enter your eyes? Okay. Doc. When you use your yeah. elbow to cover your mouth yeah. when you sneeze or cough, can it enter your eyes? I think this um, this question borders on the recommendation for people to, you know, yes. grab when they are coughing and then cough into the crease of the elbow. Um, yes, well, she has a point, but then this is you as an individual. So let's say if I am positive for COVID-19 and I cough within my elbow, even though it may enter my eye, I'm already positive. And so it's not going to increase let's say, the severity of disease for me as an individual. But then this move or this measure is important to ensure that people who have the infection do not spread it to others. Because mm. if I were to pop over here, the chances are that I would not end up having it in my hands to come and, let's say, shake your hands when I come to the studio, which okay. may lead to having the infection. And so it's just a measure to prevent community spread. Okay. Courage. Hello. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Courage, how old are you? I'm fine. Okay, you carry on. What is your question? My question is that why is children not tested for COVID-19? So why are they not testing children for COVID-19? Yes. Doc. <laughs> That's a very nice question. Um, well, let's talk about two main factors. One, um, first of all, the belief at the beginning of the pandemic was that children had a very mild form of the disease. That's mm. the first thing. Secondly, um, research that we've had so far shows that children indeed do have very mild forms of the disease. But then the third point is that over the past week, there has been an emergence of a particular strain of the virus that is causing children to be very sick. And so the straight answer to his question is, you would only get tested when you have the symptoms that would put you within the criteria for testing. The testing is reserved for people who have a dry cough for, I think, over three days or a new cough that is persistent within a 24-hour period mm. and then who have temperature above 38 plus or minus um, contact with someone who may be infected. And so, yes, children do get tested. But the question is, how many children would cross into the criteria within which testing would be necessary or indicated. Okay. Kwabna yeah. from Konongo, good morning. Good morning. All right, speak to us. Kwabna? Yes, ma'am. Okay, talk to us. What is your question for doctor? When someone recovers from COVID-19, does the virus still stay in the immune system? Okay, doc. Oh my, that's a lovely question from Kwabna. Kwabna from Konongo, right? Yes. Anyway, yes. And so the first thing you would want to note is um, what happens when you have the infection. When you have the infection, we expect that you will recover. And when you recover, you should test negative mm. after a while. And when you test negative, you may not get the virus again or the infection again. That's the, that was the initial thinking. But now we have come to a point where we've had people who had the infection 
they recovered on treatment and have tested positive again. And that may be as a result of the fact that, you know, we have four different strains or so, or four to five different strains that research currently shows. And so if you've had type A or one particular type and you recover from it, that doesn't mean that you should go out and be complacent because if you get into contact with type B or strain B, you might get reinfected. Okay. And so okay. that's where we are. All it's right. not like chicken okay. pox that when you get, it means you, you never not get, get it. again. Okay. Yes. Now we are at the point where we are beginning to believe that if you've had one type of COVID-19, you might actually get a different strain of the virus. That's why you should stay safe. So Kelvin from Kaswa. Hello? Yes. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Okay, so doctor is listening. Please, when our parents are infected, do take care of us. When your what? When our parents, parents when are our parents are affected, who take care of us? Doc, who take yeah. care of the children? Good question again. This best brings to mind um, a fundamental principle of health. When you look at health within the public space or health of a nation or health of the general public, health is linked to economics and it's linked to sociology. It's linked to the entire economic situation of the country as well. I'll use England as an example. If you were to be severely affected by COVID-19, let's say mother and father, then you would give a call to the social services to come and temporarily take care of your children for you in the absence of any family member being able to do that. So I believe in the national scale in Ghana, um, with regards to the fact that we have um, a COVID hotline you could call, there should be the possibility of getting people to take care of children if, um, if and when the case is the fact that the parents have been affected by COVID-19. Okay. And I know very well that the Ghana Police Force also does a good job with that. Um, with regards to trying to single out people who are very much ravaged by the situation and trying to get um, some sort of social service support for them. And so, yes, I didn't be too worried. Um, the government should be able to sort it out. All right. Samuel, good morning. Good morning. Okay. So what is your question, Samuel? My question is, my question is, why do children get the virus? Why do children get the virus? Okay, Doc, I think I that's think I it. heard why do children not get the virus. Oh, not get it. Okay, I wasn't hearing that's, right. So that's what I heard. Tell us. Um, it's not true that children do not get the virus, but children tend to have a mild form of the virus. Mm. And as I've even mentioned, over the past week, Public Health England has released a letter that says that we should be very careful because that initial thinking that children may not have severe forms of the virus um, it's actually flawed, a bit flawed at the moment, because we've had a few children who have gotten the virus and have gotten very sick. And so the pediatricians should not be entirely complacent on the issue, and they should have a, a very low threshold for testing patients. I mean, pediatric okay. uh, children who come to hospital with um, all sorts of symptoms. Okay. Beatrice, good morning. Good morning. Morning. So you're calling us from Japan Motors? Yes. Beatrice, how old are you? I'm 13. 13. Have you started making cars, selling cars already? No. <laughs> okay. What's your question? What's your question? My question is why someone is affected with coronavirus and she's selling. When other people come to buy the food, can they get the virus? Okay. Doc. Oh my, Bella, I'm really enjoying the questions coming through from your, from your viewers today because it gives us the, um, the ability to, you know, evaluate the condition currently in its, in its um, entirety or totality. Mm. And so her question is very, very important, um, considering that we have people who sell food within the public space. The, well, two main things. First of all, coronavirus is not foodborne. Mm. Coronavirus is not in food. Yes, that's what the evidence shows so far. But the question is, the person selling the wachi, let's say Haji Afati selling wachi, if Haji Afati is positive for COVID-19, what happens is Haji Afati may be shaking her customer's hands 
or be giving some hugs to her customers or interacting with people who come to buy their food. So she, as an individual, is able to pass on the virus to people that come in contact with her. But it's not necessarily the case that the watches she's selling would be the reason for other people getting the infection. Okay. All right. Do we have another caller on the line? Hello? Not yet. Anyway, so you can still call. I think we still have Hello. some more time. Oh, I have a caller. Hello? Okay. Hello. All right. Hi, good morning. What's your name? Hello. Hello. What's your name? My name is Kojo. Kojo, where are you calling from? Uh, Accra. Accra. Okay, Kojo, what is your question? Could you stop listening to yourself? Tell us, what's your question? Okay. And pe people who are on the road that are infected, and someone goes near them and they get infected and go to the... Mm -hmm. My question is... We're listening to you. Family members, like, and they get infected. Okay. Well, did you get did you get a question? My, my question? Yes, I'm is, trying to understand what he's saying. And so the main message is if you're on the road and you get infected, as he's saying, stay at home. Because when you stay at home, you reduce the likelihood of spreading the infection to other people, let's say in your family or in the community at large. So mm. that's why we keep saying stay at home. And even when you're at home, adhere to social distancing so that you don't spread it to your mother or your father. Okay. I think that will be it for our phone calls today. I'm sorry if your child tried calling, uh, you know, but they couldn't pick up. But anyway, doctor, let me ask you. Uh, so for all the children who are listening, who are watching, yeah. and they need a message from you, what would you say to them? Well, Bella, first of all, I must say I've thoroughly enjoyed this session because um, when I was a child myself, I was the master of asking questions. Mm. That note here, and I, on that note, I would even say greetings to my parents. I know they are watching, and they can confirm what I'm saying. I asked all sorts of questions. So it's very credible. It's, I mean, it's very good that you've allowed them to ask questions today. But the message is still the same. Um, we know children would want to play. Children would want to go out to friends, have a good time with everybody. But at this point in time, please stay at home until we get to a point where the pandemic is over. And then we can go to the point where we have our communal games and interact with children from all of our different aspects of society. So the message is stay at home. Yeah. Do not touch your face unnecessarily. Wash your hands with running water and soap. Maintain social distancing. And yeah, that should be it. Thank you so much, Dr. Faisal. This is DSP, Dr. Faisal Ayembila. And we hope to see you soon when all this is over. Yes, definitely within the studio. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you, too, and stay safe. All right, and to all the children who called, very intelligent questions. We'll do this another time.